Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I am Barry Rowland, and in this episode, we'll be reviewing the Logitech Brake Pedal Load Cell Mod Kit from the guys at Rigmotech. Now, this load cell mod has been around for a long time and has been installed in a lot of G25 and G27 brake pedals over the years. But now, with the G29 and the G920's firmware having that aggressive force curve at the end of the brake pedal's travel, will this mod still have a positive effect on the braking performance of these newer versions of the pedals? Well, let's put it through the SRG review process and find out. Now let's take a closer look at what you get in the Rickmotech High Performance Sim Racing Equipment Load Cell Kit. Now, as you can see on this little piece of paper they give us here, this is an LC27 version 2, and it covers the G25, G27, G29, and G920 pedal sets. So, one thing does it all. Pretty nice. We get a couple of the stickers, so if you want to put that on your pedal set, after you've upgraded to your load cell. And we get some cable ties for our cable management needs. These are eight inches, got three of those, and so we got six of these four inch deals. But let's get to the real important parts. First, we get this spring that's gonna replace the brake spring. And you see they put a little dampener insert in here, and it's actually just, let's see if we can push that out of there, All right? Just a piece of fuel line, it looks like to me, but it has these cuts on it. You can see it has these little cuts, so I, so I'm imagining as the spring compresses, it allows this to kind of do that little number there, close up on itself. And that's why they've cut that out. Right. And the spring itself is, it feels, I don't know if it feels stronger. I don't have the other spring out, but once I do have it out, I'll check it. But it. I'm not sure if this is a stronger spring than one that's in there. I would assume it's a stronger spring, to be honest. I would think that. It does have a color code on it. You can see it's a little blue right there. So it, the manufacturer can tell what load rating the spring is for. Now let's get to the brains of the whole operation. And that's the load cell. Well, actually not the load cell. It is the board here. Let's turn it right side up so you can read it. And, of course, this is Robotech's own proprietary PCB that they've made up for this kit. And you can see here that the cable is already attached to these little spring-loaded connectors here. A little header here that's uh, pretty nice, actually. I've already taken them out. It's a simple matter just pressing down on these springs like this, and then you can take the wires out. And actually, if you go to their website and go to the video they have for the installation of this, they actually show you someone putting these in here because they're not installed. But when I took this out of the bag, it was actually already installed. So I don't know if they do that on purpose now or, you know, it's, it's you know, like I said, I'm not sure if that's how they all come now, but it's just pretty easy as far as putting them in or taking them out. So it's really not that important. And you can see that it's all got the color coding right there next to it. So it's be very hard for you to get this messed up, I think, as far as putting the wires in. And the same goes for the spade connectors here. They have soldered onto this board. They all have their little, you can see their color codes on there so we don't get the wrong wires on that. And this is where the wires from the potentiometer that are currently on the brake are going to be mounting. But we'll get to all that when we get to the installation. All right. The load cell itself, well, it's, I don't know. What this load cell is, it has some felt. They've already, some adhesive felt they've wrapped around the sides here. And of course, that's to help this thing slide up and down inside the, or, or move around and be tight. In other words, it can still move around, but it's gonna be snug in the cylinder where this goes. And again, we'll see that once we get to the actual installation. I could take this off and see if there's some kind of a branding or model number on this, but yeah. I think I'll just leave it alone because then I'll have to cut another piece of felt and do this job myself, which no real need to do that, I don't think. It is a plastic housing on this. And of course, that's the business end of the load cell where the pressure from our brake pedal will be transferred and then relayed over to the circuit board via our wires. Right. So, not a whole lot to see here. Um, like this is a 2.1 version board. You may not have seen that when I first showed you that. It's over here on this side. So this is supposed to be the latest board. And yeah, 
That's about it. For the, <laughs> that's probably the shortest closer look I think I've ever done. And this paper actually has some instructions for you. And basically it's instructions of go to our website and check out the video because it'll show you how to do it, which is actually a pretty good video. So I would recommend that if you don't like my video on how I installed it. Right. So next what we're going to do is get the pedals out and start taking those apart so we can get access to the internals where we need to be to install this nice kit. Now for the fun part where we get to actually tear our pedals apart. <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do is take all these pedal faces off first. Now I know if you went and saw the video, you actually they're only taking the brake pedal off because well, we're only putting the load cell in the brake pedal. But I am going to switch around the springs because once we do this load cell upgrade, this is going to be a very stiff pedal and not too sock friendly it, like it is right now. It's pretty sock friendly. In fact, I had fun driving these with my socks. But this is going to be a much stiffer pedal now, and you can still do it with socks, but again, the balance is going to be thrown out a little bit. This throttle will seem so weak compared to this pedal, but again, this is all personal preference, very subjective, but I thought I'd go ahead and, since I'll probably be using my shoes to drive these from now on, that I'll go ahead and switch the springs around. So we'll take the throttle spring out, throw it away. No, just kidding, not going to throw it away but we're going to replace the throttle spring with what's in the clutch right now and then the spring that we're taking out of the brake because we've got a new spring going in there, we'll put that in the clutch. So that's just something I'm gonna do and because it's just gonna balance it. I think it's gonna feel a little better when you're using the pedals. It'll be a little bit more balanced feel to them. I already had one screw out there, I was cheating. I always keep them in my magnetic dish so I don't lose them. Two more, and we got the faces off. Right on. Okay. One thing, when you put these back together, make sure that you realize there is a short and a long screw here. This one goes in the throttle. This one goes in the brake. Because they have these big plastic spacers on the back, you can see here. And they got a thin one here on the actual throttle. Right. Just uh, something to pay attention to. Now, what I'm going to do first here, obviously there's a lot of screws I'm going to have to take off the back of this thing. So I'm obviously going to speed this up for you. But I'm going to take out these metal screws first that go around the perimeter and go across here and here before I take the pedal screws out. It's just going to make things a little bit easier to do. And also there's a couple of screws here to be mindful of under this carpet bar. You can see them right there. You can see that one up there and that one down there. Don't forget those because if... If you do, you'll be trying to pull it apart and trying to think, what did I do wrong? They're not coming apart. Right. So what I'm going to do first, change my bits. And then we'll take all these little silver screws out, and I'm going to speed this up so it doesn't take forever. Okay, now you see this, this is ready to let go now because the pedal, but the pedals are still attached to the bottom and I don't want to pull it off that way. Even though you could, I could take this off and then pry up the wires that are sitting in the looms that are integrated in this cover that you'll see in a minute and some other things, but I'm actually going to go ahead and set this on a box that I have. So I'm going to take this cover off instead and the brakes will be hanging down into the actual top cover to make things a little bit easier for me. So I can, it'll actually sit there, sit there like that pretty well without pulling the wires out of the looms. So anyway, get my little brocks that I had ready for this. And we'll just set it in here like this. There we go, cool. So now all I gotta do is pull out the actual screws here that are holding the pedals in. And really, the only reason I'm doing this is because the pedals are going to be in the top, sitting in the top. I could just pull this out, but because when you put it back together, you have to make sure all these, the wiring is in the proper looms, you really need to do it this way. I mean, it would be easier just to pull it off, and I could do that, but yeah, we'll just do it this way. Right. So we'll go ahead and pull these out. Right, so now I should be able to pull this top off 
with the carpet bar and everything, and there it goes. It's coming right off. And that's what we have there. Not much to look at, actually. So we'll put that off to the side. Now we've got our pedals just kind of hanging here. And like I said, I'm going to do this a little bit differently than they did it in the video. Uh, still, we want to take this brake pedal out from here. And to do the mods on it, we have to actually obviously take each one of these out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the wires off of here. And you can see there, a little closer look there, the potentiometer wires, just like in, in the video if you watched that one. And I'm going to actually get my pliers on the very back part of this wire that's on the little blade here and just kind of wiggle it and put my thumb behind the pliers just to make sure they won't snap back and rip the wire anywhere. So it's just kind of a wiggle motion. You see it comes right off. No big deal. So there's the black one. Going for the white one now. Come on, white one. There we go. Be careful with this. You don't want to rip a wire out. Then you got all kinds of problems that you have to fix. It's better to not have to fix the problems. There we go. And again, just like in the video, we have a ground wire here. Right? So make sure you take that off too. And we should be able to get that off of this. And there it is. All right. And make sure you don't lose that screw. And that's a little teeny screw there. It's got a big like washer top on it. You see a lot of these in electrical applications. All right, now we won't lose that. Now we've got the wire loose. It's just a matter of obviously pulling the brake out. And we can get to work on that. And that's simply, first thing we want to do here is pull out these 2.5 mil bolts on either side. And there is a brass standoff or spreader or ferrule, whatever you want to call it, in there. So we'll go ahead and do this by hand. These are very easy to take off as far as there's not a lot of thread in them. They're pretty small. See right there. Go around the other side. And actually, this is under pressure. So what I'm going to do is kind of take some of the pressure off of this. You see how the pedal's going backwards a little bit while I'm taking the screw out just to keep it from snapping away on you or doing something crazy. So now I can just kind of let it go forward. There we go. All right. Now it's just a matter of kind of jiggling this thing so the fur will come out of the arm there. There we go. And again, this little brass piece will fall right out. And it will fall right out, so be mindful of that so you don't drop it and mess it up. Of course, I don't think you could really mess it up if you dropped it, even if it was on concrete. It's brass. It will bend a little bit. Right, so this is the housing that we're concerned with. First, let's take the guts out. Now, being a G29 pedal, it's a little bit different than... You can see this little black bumper in here. And here's Obviously, this is a spring. And this is what Logitech calls their load cell simulator. <laughs> it's supposed to simulate the feel of a load cell because once we get to a certain travel point, then it hits this bumper inside the spring and it becomes harder to push it. And Logitech has actually got a firmware, in their firmware, a curve on this so that it knows when this is gonna engage and when it becomes harder, it's not gonna move as far. So it's actually got a curve that increases the signal from the potentiometer here to the firmware. So that last bit of braking that you can do by pushing against this feels kind of uh, strange really. It's uh, it's kind of grabby at first when you first use this. At least it was to me coming from a load cell. I got used to it and I, I was able to hand, you know, adapt to it pretty easily. But still, just one thing to be mindful of that, you know, this is really not a substitute for a load cell. And here you can see the spring is a little bit different on the bottom here see that? than the one you saw in their video. It had three little prongs on it and that's why this little rubber thing in here had three pieces cut out of it. We saw that before. So you can see here that the spring will actually just fit around that knob, that little in little thing sticking up, little tip sticking out. Those three prongs are still there, actually. You can see them around the white part. I don't know if you guys can see that well enough, but 
they're actually, it looks like they've actually taken this white thing. In fact, I wonder if I could pull that out. Let's see. Don't want to break anything. Oh, there we go. Look at that. It comes right out. So now we have those three prongs in there again. So that's what this is for. It's supposed to fit around those, and then the spring fits on that, like so. Actually, that's the wrong spring. <laughs> oh, that's the right spring. Yeah, just make sure I had the right spring there. You want to put go to all this trouble and then put the wrong spring back in there. Right. So you got to make sure that fits on those grooves like that. That's all you're supposed to do for that piece. And I'm just wondering, you probably do need to have that rubber piece in here instead of the plastic because it's acting as a damper. So yeah, you definitely want to take this out and save it. Maybe put it with the other spring or something, but we're going to be using this spring over in our clutch. Right. Now, the only really tricky part about this is drilling this plastic piece. Remember, we've got to put a 3 16 hole in here to accommodate our wire that's sitting on the load cell. So we're going to get set up for that and come right back. Okay, now we can drill a hole in our plastic housing. And actually, I've already got one drilled. Just save us a little time. I'm going to put it on my drill press and drilled it. Again, this hole is a half, rather one inch up from the end. Easy enough to take some calipers, put them out at one inch or 25 millimeters, and just go ahead and scratch it, make a mark, and then go ahead and drill the hole. No big deal. I did clean the hole up a little bit. It was a little ragged with some plastic hanging on it. But yeah, I think everybody would do that without being told that they need to do that. So everything will slide inside very nicely. So now all we have to do is thread our wire into the hole and then slide the load cell up there. And I kind of put a little curve or bend in the wire like that and twisted them together just a little bit. So make it easier to get it in there. So it's just kind of going up inside. And you can obviously see it from the top as it comes through. And there we go. So now we got to do is thread it through and get the load cell ready to go in. Now when we put this in, you'll see there's a, it's a, right where it goes into the housing, there's actually a thicker part to it that has to be bent over to be able to slide this in. It's a tight fit. And you just bend it over like that. And you see that? And then we're just going to slide it in along the seam. And the top wire is going to kind of push out. And the idea is to get this thing pushing in. And we're going to pull up on this as I push it in with my thumb because I want to get that tough, hard part that's right next to going into where the wire goes into the load cell to pop out of this hole. So it's kind of a dance here you're doing. And I'm just kind of pushing it with my thumb and pulling up here. And we'll see if we can get this to work properly. As long as it stays straight, we should be okay. And it looks like we got it. Yep. So again, this is kind of hard to see maybe, but there you can see it. Maybe you can see it good there. So we've got that wider or thicker spot in the hole. Now I know when I looked at their video that you're supposed to be able to wiggle this around and wiggle it around in here, but we are dealing with the G29 pedal set here instead of a G27, which I believe that's what they were using. Plus this has the felt on it. I don't remember seeing felt on the other load cell in their video, but as long as it's in there and it's, it's where it should be and I'm pushing on it, so I know it's hitting the top flat part of that plastic piece that's inside of here. So that should do it. We're ready to go now. All we got to do now is put it back together, which can be kind of tricky because we've actually going to have a, a harder time putting this back in because of the spring tension in this bumper that we put in here. And we got to make sure your bumper is lined up properly and push that in. So it goes on those, if you saw the other part, it goes right on those grooves like it needs to, or those pieces sticking up. Those grooves have to fit in there. Right, or you could just do it like this and then push it down. Now when I push this spring down all the way and then let it back up, the strange thing is it pulls that bumper up a little bit. Now once it's under pressure, it probably won't be able to come up that far. So. The thing is, you, you, it's still long enough, the cuts in it, that if I try to twist it, it won't twist. So the, it's still catching where it needs to, but it does come back up a little bit. I just noticed that when I was messing with it. Right, so now we've got this all set up. 
and we're going to run the wire underneath here so keep it out of the way and remember all this stuff is metal pieces here even inside of here very very sharp all right so if you're doing this be careful how you're grabbing things because you can certainly cut yourself very easily right so let's go ahead and run our wire out the back here just like that and it's going to be facing down towards the bottom when we're done now all we got to do is put it back together so we take our little brass ferrule or standoff and then we're going to flip this up and put it on top and you can see just sitting flat like that on the spring you see how much it's sitting up so we're definitely going to have to use some compression to get this down now i'm also going to have to use probably first off we're going to obviously be putting our screws back in and these are those short 2.5 mil flatheads 2.5 mil wrench and i am actually going to use this to help me locate this in the hole, this ferrule in the hole here where the threads are supposed to go. It's going to be easier than me just trying to do it all with my hands. So we just have to see how this goes. So I'm going to push down on it and get it in the vicinity of where it needs to go. The threads are lining up pretty good. I might not need that. Let's see if I can hold it there long enough. That's the only thing because there is a lot of pressure on this thing. So actually I got that one started. So now I can just take my wrench and go ahead and run it in while I'm still pulling back on it so it doesn't create a lot of pressure on the screw itself. Kind of a little dance we're doing here. <laughs> and I'm not going to tighten it all the way, but just to keep it secured in there. Now, all we have to do is go into the other side and get the screw in. But if you look, because of the tension on this thing, it's not lined up. So this is where this will come in handy. Well, not this because I'll need that. I'm just going to slide that down in front, right in there, in between those little screw thingies in there, and use that as a lever to press back and take, and first two things I'm doing, taking the pressure off of it and lining up my screws there. So if this all works well, I should be able to just do that and get my screw started. And there it goes. So much easier than trying to wrestle it, just holding the top of that piece of plastic. And now I can just go ahead and get a good tighten on it. Go on the other side and make sure it's tight now. And there it is. All right. Now, let's see what we got here. Wow. <laughs> this is a totally different brake pedal now. It uh, is an alien brake pedal. <laughs> the, yeah, it's, you got that little bit of push there you can see. The initial push, like if you're on a hydraulic system, that's what that simulates before the pads are actually grabbing the rotor and yeah that's a lot of effort and then once we're there obviously we can push a little bit further and we're just pushing against the load cell at that point yeah this is uh, going to be a whole different feel in fact this is so stiff again like i said it's it's better to go ahead and take this brake spring put it in the clutch take the clutch put it in the throttle so you can balance it the feel out a little bit because this is going to be super stiff and the other stuff's going to be well, not quite there, so it wouldn't, I, I don't think it would feel quite right, but then again, everybody's different, it's all subjective, but that's how I'm going to set it up at first, so I'm going to have to do a little extra work to put the springs in, but not that much extra work. So, now we're just going to drop this back in, get our wires hooked up, and we should be good to go. Let's see, go ahead and keep this wire out of the way, make sure that drops into where it's, they've got these little spacers down here. So we can show you this. Got these little grooves cut in the plastic over here. Right in here. Oh, right in there. That this end of the pedal metal fits into. So you gotta make sure you drop that in there. Right. There we go. Now we dropped it in properly. Now what we're gonna do is take our circuit board and start putting wires back on. First, I'm gonna go ahead and put these wires in. And you saw before, if you're watching the closer look, what we had here as far as how this goes in. Little, they have these little spring buttons on here. And we push those down, it opens up a little hole in there that has metal on it. Then we let go, it clamps down on the metal wire. Very nice. And of course, we wanna make sure we get the red, yellow, and black where it needs to go. So red, yellow, and black. I'm going to kind of just spread these apart so they're lined up. 
Let's see, red should be first, then yellow, then black. Okay. Bear with. These are kind of skinny wires. Red and yellow. There we go. Just like that. And I'm going to kind of spread them apart there with my pinch them. Because they're all pretty much, they did a good job soldering these ends on these. They did a pretty good job on that. So really it's just a matter of getting them lined up in their holes here. And make sure you get the right ones in the right holes. <laughs> okay. And that's what I'm going to do is put them in the hole. Put down all the springs and go ahead and shove them in there. Now I've got red, yellow, and black. And they're all tight. Now I like to take, because we put them all in at once, just as a little safety thing, I'll just take an each wire and tug on it just a little bit just to make sure it's not coming out and it's got a good connection in there. Go ahead and grab the red one here. Easy. Yep. So it's all good. Now, as I said before, we got a lot of wire hanging out here and we're going to look for a place that we're going to be sticking this and still not interfere with anything. And I'm thinking right about, and we also have to stick it in here so we got plenty of room for these wires to go in. Let me get a better look at this. Going this way. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just put the wires back on our little board. And again, we just want to make sure we have red to red, white to white, black to black. So let's go ahead and do that. And I've got my little ground wire here hanging off, so I don't want to... You can see this is actually an extra ground wire. It's just a thing of note. This made into the existing wire connector here. So it was a ground for the resistor, but it's grounding. It's getting its ground off the metal plate here. Interesting. All right. So I'll go ahead and get my... Let's see. We'll turn it this way. Red goes on first. Should just be able to push these on. Yep, they snap on pretty easy. Then we got white. Then we got black. And there you have it. We're all connected. What we got to do now is find a place, a decent place to stick this where it's going to be out of the way and still give us room to get these wires back in here in our loom like it was before. So that means I'm going to have to have it right about there. That looks pretty good, actually. Then I can put my ground wire back over here. Got to make sure there's room for that to reach. Yep. So I'm just going to stick it down there flat out of the way. So again, it's just a double-sided tape. Peel that off. If we can get it to peel off. It's kind of foamy. Double-sided tape. Thick stuff. All right. Okay, I'm just going to kind of stick it down the hole here, and I'll show you where I put it as soon as I get it in there. Get it past the little plastic rib here and the pedal. And there you go. You guys can see that okay. Pretty easy. I mean, you can put it somewhere else if you wanted to. I'm just trying to make it easy on my wire routing. I'm just trying to think about that because it still has to fit in these looms here like that and like that before we seal it all back up. Now, we still have to get our ground wire in. Again, no big deal. It's just going to go up here in the metal casing. And I like that the pedals are loose because we can actually pull this back up to get my ground wire in a little bit easier. So I'm just going to take the ground wire, get my screw in it. Oh, well, you guys are going to see this because I have to kind of get in the way with my drill here. Let's see if I can get it up higher. Well, I can't get it so far because the ground wire is not long enough. So there we go. All right. Check the ground wire. It's nice and stiff. It's on there. And there we have it. Before I actually drive this pedal, brake pedal, now that we've got the load sen sensor in it, I'm going to go into DI view, as you see here. And typically, I, when I get a new set of pedals, I go in here anyway just to set the pedals up. Maybe I'll put a little dead zone in the clutch and the brake depending on what the load or pressure sensors or whatever it is that I'm using or registering. And if you look down here, I've already got the raw data, view raw data checked so we can see it. And you see there's only 255 steps here of resolution. So 
if I press the brake pedal, you see, number one, it's going in reverse direction. It's not going in the right direction. It's going in the reverse direction. That's just, just the way the Logitech pedals work. And remember, there's a curve at the very end here in our firmware. And I was going to try to, I don't even know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to try to lessen the effect of that aggressive curve at the end by putting a dead zone at the end. Not a big one, just something to put in there to maybe keep it from being as grabby as it was before, before we put the load cell in. So, and you can see I've got the, my foot all the way off the brake pedal and it's, and the raw dead on the bottom is 249. And I want to calibrate these pedals, so we're going to do a right click and go to calibration. Move this up here. And this is typically what you do on a pedal anyway when you're doing it in DI view. I'm going to fix that because it's only 249. I'm going to go in here and say, okay, we're going to make this 249. So 249. And my middle, I'm going to leave on the, the center. I'm just going to leave centered. And if you watch the travel back down here, it's, and when I'm doing this, I can actually see it kind of snap a little bit towards the end. It just snaps over there. And that leads me to believe that's where that aggressive curve is in the firmware. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pull off about 25 points at first. Maybe even not that much. I'm going to go 20. And make that a dead zone. And of course it's a dead zone at the very end of the pedal travel. And if I can make that dead zone in there and make the games recognize that as nothing past that, then I can calibrate in game and hopefully not get the grabbiness that's in that curve. In other words, lessen it up a little bit. So what I'll go to is over here in the minimum, up here in our edit calibration. I'm going to put 20 in. There we go. And now we have 20 minimum, 128 center, and 249 for our end. I'm going to click OK. And now you can see that the red doesn't move as aggressively. See how that, at the very end, that black was just distance itself from the red. And that's got to be the firmware doing that, I would imagine. So, now I've got 100% max in my black. I'm going to go ahead and get the raw data out of here because we don't need it anymore. So now it's 100% when I release it. Before it was like 97 point something. So now we're at 100 max and I can go, of course it's going to be zero the other way. Now, now that this is saved, I am going to go ahead and get out of the I view and we're going to go ahead and fire up some games here and see how this brake, brake pedal behaves and we're also going to run on the PlayStation 4 console to see if I can feel any difference there too so we'll get to that next all right so here we are in iRacing the first game we're going to test the load cell in and here's a little braking here at the after turn one into the little S's and the first thing I notice when I was using this pedal is, well, being pressure based automatically, I felt a little more comfortable or at home with it because that's what I use is either a hydraulic pedal with a pressure sensor on it or a load cell based brake pedal. And here in iRacing, it worked great. Now, I don't know if the DI view adjustments made it less grabby at the end, but it was definitely was. It didn't tend to grab like I did when I was running that. The potentiometer in spring setup. But yeah, in our racing it worked very well and I, I didn't have any problems adjusting to it. And once I had adjust to it, yeah, I was just able to make nice progressive braking, even after a high speed run like down the straight here as we go into turn 17. And you do a lot of trail braking at that point. You're on it hard and then you kind of come off a little bit to start your turn, but still try to maintain some grip. Now we're over in, where are we at now? This is a set of Corsa. Yes, a set of Corsa. And we're in the Ferrari. And yeah, same thing here. When I was, once I got into the Ferrari and made a few laps, I could pretty much regulate really predictably on where my braking points needed to be be it a hard braking or a very light braking, like when you get really light coming across the crust of this little section here before you brake going into that right hand turn. And yeah, it's just a natural feeling brake now to me. 
and it, based on the pressure, it's much easier to adjust to, I think, than to how far the pedal is traveling to how much brake you want to put on it. Even when they put those conical rubber bumpers and things like that on the brake pedal, it's just, just not the same as this load cell. It's just a lot easier to regulate exactly where you want the car to be and be able to come around the track lap after lap and repeat that over and over again. So yeah, we're creating uh, a set of Corsa also. And we actually were in, after a set of Corsa here, we're actually gonna be into the, I believe it's R-Factor 2. Yes, there we are. R-Factor 2, back at Sebring, in the Ferrari again, and the same thing once I had the pedals adjusted in game, of course, which we do in every game. Yeah, again, very repeatable. Uh, a good feel to the brake, especially after those long runs where you're entering the, the turn and you're on the brake hard at first and then you kind of feather it out. Turn one here is a good feathering brake corner. And again, just enough pressure to get it slowed down so you don't slide away from that corner. And again, we're going through the S's here after turn one. And yeah, it's just much easier to control the car for me personally than trying to use the spring and the pot setup. Now, R Factor 2 actually felt a little bit vaguer than iRacing or Set of Course did for some reason. Might have been the brake setup itself in the game. I didn't maybe spend a long, enough time messing with that. But then we went over to the consoles. And of course, console, my DVI view adjustments are irrelevant <laughs> because it's the console. So, but even here, and this is what surprised me, I didn't think I would notice much because I didn't have the DI view. Uh, advantage if you will if there was one and yeah right away I just felt much better to me as far as the braking points I was more confident going into a turn like that when you had to be very light going on the brake pedal there also here coming across the crest of this hill before the S turn or the corkscrew it's yeah much better feel to me going into those turns than when I was using the potentiometer so I think what we can get from all this is that even in the consoles, the load cell is, to me, a marked improvement on braking performance. Now that might be because I'm used to pressure sensitive or pressure sensing type of brake pedals, and it was like coming back home a little bit to me from using the potentiometer and the spring setup, even with that little rubber bumper in there. But yeah, I think that if you are looking to improve your braking, this is a good way to go. Now, of course, there's a lot of guys out here who are very, very fast with using the potentiometer because we can get used to just about anything. But I think even those guys could benefit from a load cell brake and be a little bit more consistent and maybe add a couple of tenths to their lap times. Right, so I think what we'll do next is go ahead and get to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Rick Motec load cell conversion kit for the Logitech brake pedal. Rick Motec has been making this kit for over four years now, so I think it's safe to say that it is a design that has withstood the test of time. It just works. The parts that make up this kit seem to be of good quality and should last a long time. Installation of the kit was straightforward and not too difficult. I don't think anyone with basic mechanical abilities would have much problem with the kit installation process. The kit includes good documentation and there's also a lot of information on the net on how to get it done. Because Logitech has decided to add an aggressive curve to the end of the travel in the G29 and G920 brake pedals, I decided to try and mute the effect it has on the load cell's performance. I used DI view to create a small dead zone at the end of the pedal's travel. And I did feel that the pedal was not as grabby as it had been when using the stock brake pedal setup. But that could have been because of the effect of the load cell by itself. Of course, in console driving games, DI view has no impact whatsoever, but I was happy to find that the conversion did improve the brake field in Project Cars 2. I was able to enter the braking zones with more confidence than before, entering turns deeper and feeling the effect of trail braking on the car as it rotated in a turn. All in all, I think this is a worthy upgrade to the G29 brake pedal. The only pause I would have in doing this mod would be whether or not I'm upgrading my pedal set in the near future. If I knew I would be buying a pedal set with a load sensing brake pedal in say the next six months or so, I would probably wait for the new set before spending the $130 to get this mod. But 
if I was not considering upgrading my pedals anytime soon, then I would do this mod. It not only makes the task of braking more controllable, but also makes it more fun. I'm Barry Rowland, and thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel.